Welcome to One to One with Simon Jordan. Next week, we'll be back to answering your questions about football, so don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. But now, we're going to talk about journalism and the media. As some of you may know, journalists have got on my bloody nerves in the past. I do not know a journalist that has ever bought a football club, ever managed a football club, ever sold a player, ever bought a player, ever picked a team, ever been first hand in any experience which gives them the opportunity to be able to put certain parts of football to the sword. There's nothing wrong with objectivity. Journalists' job, in my view, is to give an objective opinion not to write what they think is a fact and to represent it as fact and to create news rather than report news. I remember early in my tenure dealing with, you know, what people will consider now heavyweight journalists like John Cross that wrote articles for The Mirror and continued to write articles for The Mirror. He wrote articles about me that were factually untrue, got his newspaper sued. One of them specifically was apparently about me interviewing Glenn Hoddle for the Crystal Palace job and Glenn Hoddle not being prepared to work for someone like me. The facts that evaded John was that I hadn't even met Glenn, so I don't quite know how I could have interviewed him. And then you roll forward a year, 18 months later, and your team is in the playoff final and you're playing against West Ham and for some reason, somebody in your dressing room that isn't perhaps being treated the way he thinks should be treated goes to a newspaper and sells a story about a football club being in turmoil and players about to go on strike before arguably the biggest game in the club's history in the last 10 years and certainly the biggest game in my tenure which was the playoff semi-final, sorry, playoff final against West Ham. So that developed a blueprint for me having a distrust and a dislike of certain segments of journalism. There's some outstanding journalists, and don't get me wrong, I don't just sit there with a one-dimensional binary view of it's black or it's white, it's one or the other. You can get into the grey areas and say that there's some good journalism there. But my trouble has been over the years that I've seen a lot of the poor and not a lot of the good. But when I saw local newspapers that needed the access and I wanted to give them over the national, so this local newspaper I'm talking about is a relatively large one, it's a London newspaper called The Evening Standard. They spent their entire time writing articles that had nothing to do with the, the, the football team and more to do with the colour of their chairman's hair, more to do with which girlfriend he was dating and more to do with some vitriol about whatever mistake I may have made at the time. I decided, well, you can write this crap from outside the stadium, stop eating my biscuits and you can go outside the stadium and write your nonsense. And their solution to rectifying a problem that they had utterly created was for their editor to phone the shirt sponsor of Church Churchill Insurance, which sponsored our, our, our team shirts, to suggest that they should reduce their commercial endorsement of my football club because they weren't getting the exposure on the back page of the Evening Standard. Once I'd regained my composure and come down from my incandescent heights, I chose to phone the editor of the Evening Standard to ask him what he thought he was playing at, to be greeted with this sentiment, which has stuck with me forever. If it wasn't for us reporting your football club, your football club wouldn't be as successful as it's currently being. Which staggered me given the fact that you're reporting events that other people are doing rather than necessarily being involved in those things. So rather than facilitate a solution, he exacerbated it, which got them banned for another year. And in the end, I decided they were un irrelevant and unimportant. So with that in mind, I like good journalism. I like honest journalism. I like balanced journalism. I like informed journalism. I like fair journalism. There's not enough of it. And you can be right or you can be wrong, but if you're definitely honest in the way that you approach it, whether it's me sitting in my capacity with talk sport, looking at it through the eyes of an experienced former club owner that both won and lost economically, often on the pitch, and somebody that's sitting here with the desire to be expressing his views, I think you have to be fair. And I do believe there's not enough good journalism in this country. And I worry that it gets lost in clickbait. So, there is my rant on journalism. Try to be fair and balanced in my own view. Let me know what you think in the comment sections below and don't forget to leave your questions for next week's show.